Hi, my name is Hunter. I'm a registered veterinary technician and one of the veterinarian liaisons here at Alicia Pet Care Center. And I'm gonna go over some surgical aftercare instructions with you. The first thing we always tell our pet parents is not to give any over-the-counter medications. And what we mean is like Advil, Tylenol, Ibuprofen, those kind of things can actually be really toxic to our pets. So make sure that you're only giving medications that we have prescribed and those will be gone over with you on the day of the procedure. With any sort of procedure, we do want you to keep a close eye on the incision. It's very important that we make sure it stays clean and dry and we wanna monitor for anything abnormal, which would be swelling at the surgery site, any sort of discharge, um, if it's opening up at all, if it looks like sutures are coming loose, anything like that, let us know. And if at any point you're looking at the incision and you're just not sure if what you're seeing is normal or not, shoot a picture of it, send it our way, and we can typically let you know as long as it's a pretty good picture, whether that's something that's normal or whether that is something that we wanna take care of. Another thing I tell our pet parents is that sometimes after anesthesia, some of our patients might be more vocal than they normally are at home, meaning they might whine, cry, howl, things like that. That is actually very typical after an anesthetic procedure. And most commonly, it's because of the medications that we give. Some of the pain medications can cause a little bit of dysphoria, a little bit of a head high, and that can discombobulate our pets a little bit. Kind of similar to when people have the humans have their wisdom teeth out and they're kind of gibbering, being all crazy afterwards. This is kind of the pet equivalent to that. If we are seeing this at home, it usually resolves within 12 to 24 hours of the anesthesia. So as long as your pet otherwise seems comfortable, seems like they're resting okay, that is very normal and just wait for that effect to wear off. Some things we do want you to monitor for after a procedure are vomiting or diarrhea. We do give an anti-nausea medication before the procedure, and that typically lasts about 24 hours. So we don't expect any tummy trouble, but if you do see any of those signs, let us know. Another thing that we sometimes see after anesthesia is sometimes our patients might not have a bowel movement right away post-op. It may take a few days, and that's very normal. Every pet is different. We have some patients that are gonna go home that night and have a bowel movement, and then some that it just might take a few days. We're not concerned if it does take a few days. The only time we want you to report to us is if you notice that your pet is going to the bathroom and it looks like they're straining to go and having a hard time of it, let us know. Otherwise, just wait for nature to take its course. For your pet's procedure today, they likely had an IV catheter placed in one of their front arms. So they will have a small shave mark there. When they go home with you today, they might have a little green bandage wrapped around that front arm. That is just a pressure bandage from when we take the IV out, kind of similar to how we would go home with like a Band-Aid on our arm after an IV. This should be taken off when you get home. Um, especially with cats, I always recommend taking it off right when you get home because I know with my kitties, their first instinct is to run under my king size bed and hide from me. So we do wanna make sure we take that bandage off when we get home with them. Your pet might be going home with some sutures in. For most of our spays and neuters, those sutures are going to be internal and are going to dissolve on their own. So those don't need to be removed. If your pet had another type of surgery, like a mass removal or something like that, there may be sutures or staples on the outside that do need to come out in 14 days. We will let you know during your discharge if we do need to see you back for that technician appointment. Um, otherwise, if we don't let you know that we need to take those out, they are internal and will dissolve on their own. For most of our procedures, we are gonna have your pa our patients go home with an e-collar on. And that might be a plastic e-collar, that might be a comfy cone, um, but either way, we do recommend leaving that on for 14 days post-op. That way they can't get to their incision. Um, and the best recommendation I have for you is to leave that cone on 24 seven. It's just the way that our pets adjust to them more quickly and it's the safest so that they don't have a chance to get to their incisions and cause any harm. If you do need to take that cone off for any reason, so say your pet just can't figure out how to eat with it on or something like that, make sure somebody is watching them. We have seen it happen where pets get even a minute to themselves without that cone on and they've done damage to their surgery sites. So we do wanna make sure that we are being as vigilant as we can with the cone and keeping that on for the full 14 days until everything has healed up. 
The next thing too is we do need to limit their activity after a procedure. So for dogs with spays and neuters and most general surgeries, we do recommend absolute rest for the first 48 hours post-op. And so what this looks like is if your pet is used to being in a crate and they're happy in there, it's a good time to use that to your advantage. So anytime that they're not with you or if you leave the house, pop them in that crate so that we know they're not up and doing a ton of independent movement. If they're not used to a crate, I just recommend confining them to one room or area of the house so they don't have free reign of the whole home. Um, with cats, this is a little bit different. So I recommend 24 hours of absolute rest with kitties. And what I recommend doing with them is putting them into one room, um, like a bathroom or a small bedroom, somewhere that they don't have a lot of things, high things that they can jump up on and climb up on. Um, cats though are a little bit harder to keep down than dogs, so just do your best to keep them quiet. After that initial period of absolute rest, we do want to try a minimal movement period. For dogs, I recommend minimal movement for about two weeks. And what this looks like is we want to prevent jumping up and down off furniture, um, running around, playing too much. And if you have stairs in the home, I do recommend limiting stair use. Um, if you have a pup that maybe just goes up and down the stairs once or twice a day to go to bed or something like that, that's okay as long as they're doing so in a mellow way. But if you do have a dog that wants to go up and down those stairs a ton throughout the day, you might want to block that off. For cats, the uh, minimal movement period is typically about a week. So again, cats kind of do what they want. So what I recommend for them is just anytime you see that maybe they're about to jump up on something, you try to discourage them away from it, um, try to distract them with something else. The last thing for dogs as far as activity goes is we do want them to be leash walked only for a full 14 days after surgery. This means I don't want them to have any time outdoors where they are not on a non-retractable leash. So even if they're in your own yard, I still recommend throwing a leash on them because you just never know when they're gonna see a squirrel and go to chase it or get the urge to do zoomies or something like that and hurt their incision. So just make sure all outdoor times for two weeks post-op are on a leash. Now with the jumping for both cats and dogs, if you do see it happen, don't panic. We can only do so much in keeping our pets more mellow. Um, if you do see them jump on, up onto something, just make sure we're checking those incisions daily. Usually if they're being too active, their incision might show signs of that. It might appear swollen or things like that. So as long as you're monitoring that, you're probably doing just a fine job in keeping them down. For cats and dogs though, if you do find that you are having a really difficult time keeping them calm, if they are just really, really rowdy, let us know and we can talk about adjusting medications or adding some medications, things like that if we need to. As far as feeding your pet the night of a procedure, for most procedures, you can feed them the night of and we will wanna do a small amount that night. So I typically recommend feeding half on the night of a procedure just in case they do have some breakthrough nausea, we don't wanna overload their tummy with food. Um, it's kind of hit or miss whether pets eat the night of a surgery. Some are ravenous, some eat their whole meal, some don't have a ton of interest in it, and that's totally fine. So either way is normal the night of surgery. The next day, they can have their full amount of food again if they want it. Um, and then as far as medications go, we are gonna be going over your specific medication names, dosing, instructions, and everything like that when we call you to let you know that your pet is ready. And then last but not least, if at any point you have concerns about your pet during the healing process, reach out to us. If we aren't open, our phones automatically will forward to Animal Urgent Care in Mission Viejo. So they are there to help you too if you need anything and it's after hours with us. Thank you so much for watching this aftercare video. I hope that you watch it before your procedure so that you're prepared. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask the day of surgery when we call post-op or even when you pick up your pet.